everybody is speaking about sustainability, about insect declines, about climate change. And at the same time, when we are traveling through Western Europe, we all see the same picture. We see a desert of agricultural areas, intensive landscapes, monotonous fields. We don't see people there. We don't see birds and butterflies that are disappearing. The cup with 40% of the EU budget, 60 billion euros a year, has basically the power to affect the processes we are seeing. The main problem with the cup is it actually doesn't fulfill any of its original objectives. In terms of the environment, we see insect declines continuing. In terms of climate, agri agricultural greenhouse gas emissions are actually increasing instead of decreasing. In terms of employment, we see continuing decline of agricultural employment. The cup doesn't manage to fulfill the power that it has in shaping these processes. The EU announced that they are acknowledging the problem and the next cap is going to be greener and more sustainable. What we did was to evaluate the proposal, which was published in June 2018, as to analyze whether the next cap is really going to be better in terms of the environmental and sustainability performance. First look when you examine the proposed cap post-2020, it looks really nice. There is a new green architecture, there are new conditional payments to environment, there are new objectives along with SDGs, and there is a result payment orientation. But when you look at the details, the next cap is actually going to be worse. The first thing to do was to cut on pillar two, or what you call rural development program, which is where the best instruments are residing. If you want to address sustainability challenges, what you need to do is to expand and not to cut on pillar two. Secondly, there's a green architecture which actually goes back to the cross-compliance mechanism, a mechanism which basically puts requirements of farmers but has very low sanctioning power. So instead of sharpening greening, they actually made it vague, unclear, and weak. The cap reform process was a predetermined decision to maintain direct payments, to retain the cap as it is, rather than to actually perform a real reform. The EU has completely ignored evidence that was provided to them, such as the fitness check that we submitted in 2017, and they actually ignored public will. 92% of the public, 64% of the farmers expressed the will to see improved environmental performance. Actually, the reform proposal goes exactly against public will and the evidence. So the good news is that we are not yet at the end of the reform process. There's a new parliament now, there's a new president, and maybe they will seize the opportunity in improving the cap and defining that the cap is going to perform for sustainability. That requires the courageous decision that the cap from now on supports sustainable forms of farming and doesn't support unsustainable farming. It requires conditionalizing all payments to the environment and to sustainability and cancelling payments that don't do that.